Hey guys, what's going on? Let's make a damage multiplier. Welcome to Game Hacking 206. We've had an amazing five prior videos leading up to this one, so if at any point in this video you're not quite understanding what's going on, I suggest you watch the 200 series from the beginning. I'll have the link to that in the description below. But okay, let's get into this. For our damage multiplier, we'll be making some changes to the God Mode one hit kill script we made in the last video. And I've also got an address for Bill over here who's graciously volunteered to help us out with this. No, no, Thank you, no, Bill. No. So let's open up that script and bring up the code address into the disassembler by copying the address, hitting the memory view button, then right clicking on any opcode and choosing go to address, and then pasting in the code address. And okay, this sub instruction is the start of where our script places the jump to our injected code. And if you missed the last video, we got to this sub instruction in Game Hacking 205 by finding our health address and hooking this code down here with the what writes to debugger, and then manually tracing our way up to this point. And if anything I just said isn't quite making sense, read the comments to the right, and if you're still struggling, then you should probably go back and watch the last video. But okay, let's head to the one-hit kill script, and I've added in some comments to help us keep track of what's going on here. But starting from the top, I had to go back and change the pointer for our condition that separates the player and the enemies, because the one I had in here originally did not have a value that stayed the same as I progressed in the game. It happens, but so far, this offset has had a 2 very consistently for just the player. And of course, for the player, we're coming in and placing max health into EAX after the damage sub, so we have infinite health. And the enemies are being sent down here, where we're placing 0 into EAX, so when it's checked for 0 here, they take the jump to the kill instructions. But enough about what's already been done, let's get into modifying this from a one hit kill to a damage multiplier. A few different ways we can do this, but multiplying the damage being dealt before it's subtracted from health will give us a lot of control over our multiplier. And for integers, we have two main multiplication commands. Mull, which performs unsigned multiplication, and imul, which does signed multiplication. And if you're thinking, huh? In Game Hacking 204, we discussed that game programmers can choose whether or not to include negative numbers in a value, and that the number limits for the value are different if they do. For example, let's say you're playing a game where health is a bite-sized integer. If it's restricted to positive numbers only, the minimum health you can have is zero and your max health could never go above 255 even if you hacked it. And if negative numbers are allowed, you lose half your positive limit to make room for all the negative numbers. So our positive only health is an unsigned value, and it's called that because none of the values can have a negative sign in front of them. They all have to remain unsigned. And the health where negative numbers are allowed is called signed because we can add a negative sign to numbers within the range. Now, in this video, we're going to use imul because it's easy to understand and use. And most of us won't need to use mul anyway because 1. Most games nowadays use signed data for the stuff we actually care about. And 2. imul will get us the same result as mul will within the number range of the value we're multiplying by anyway. But we'll get into the details of that in another video. So anyway, the point is we're going with imul, which is kind of unique because you can use it with 1, 2, or 3 operands. And with three operands, you multiply the two things on the right and store the result into the destination on the left. With two operands, things are similar to the add and sub commands we've already covered previously in the series. You simply take the destination on the left, times the source on the right, and then store the result into the source. With one operand though, things start to get a bit more complex. And we'll take a deep dive into this in another video, but we have the much easier to understand two and three operand versions of IMO that we can pick from. And for our damage multiplier, I'll use it with two operands since that's probably what we're all more familiar with. And in this example, we take EDI times 3 and then store the result into EDI. And here in the script, EDI is damage. So this is damage times 3 and then right below it, EAX, which is holding current health, is subtracted by the new triple damage. And if we test this... We can see that I'm dealing a lot more damage now. And look, this is great and all, but it's a bit restrictive. Every time we'd want to change the multiplied amount, we need to come back inside the script and change this number. But there's a way we can get around that. Remember that addresses can be manipulated directly in the address list. So if we assign the damage multiplier to an address, kind of like we did in the stamina script we made in Game Hacking 204, we can add it to the address list and control the multiplier outside of the script. So let's do that. First, we need to allocate some memory for the address, and remember, this needs to be above this new mem. 
So first we name it, and then we have our first big decision. How many bytes should we allocate? That all depends on how big you want your multiplier to be. It's normally best to match the byte size of the addresses you'll be affecting unless you know you need a different number of bytes because it makes things less complicated. All right, and I'll copy the code location here to make sure that Cheat Engine chooses a memory address for the damage multiplier that's somewhere near all this other code. Then we need to declare a default value for our address, and we just add the name of the colon after it, and we put a D here for declare, and a second D because we're assigning a 4 byte value. And I'll have this in the description below, so feel free to copy and save it. And now for the next big decision. What do we set the initial value to? Whatever we type in here will be the default multiplier for our script. I'll just type in 1 so normal damage is the default until we change the multiplier in the cheat table. And the reason why 1 will be normal damage is because when we come down here and replace the 3 with our address name in brackets, damage times 1 will be normal damage. And alright, we always need to deallocate our memory down here under exit. And then we can hit OK to save the changes to the script. And now we just need to add the address of our damage multiplier to the address list. And to find it, we can activate the script and then in the disassembler, follow the jump to our injected code. And right here we see our IMOL instruction and the address of our multiplier. So if we come over and click on add address manually, we can type in the address and give it a new description. And now, just like any address, we can double click in the value column and change the value to whatever we want. Pretty cool. But just like most other addresses, our damage multiplier address is going to change every time we restart the game, which kind of defeats the whole point of using a memory address for a multiplier in the first place. But thankfully, Cheat Engine provides us with a really easy solution to this. If we go back to the script and we use the register symbol command with the name of our address, Cheat Engine will remember the name of our address and let us use it outside of our script. Note that there are no spaces in the command and we need to match the name exactly with what's in our memory address. And just like when allocating memory, you'll want to come down and unregister the symbol name in the disable section. Alright, after we hit OK, we can reactivate the script, then come back and hit add address manually, and then type in the name of our address, and I'll give this a different description this time. And as you can see, Cheat Engine finds the address based on the name, and it will do this every time, even when the address changes. Keep in mind though that this memory address is only allocated with our value when the script is activated. Not a big deal because when we activate it, we get it right back, but it looks kind of strange when the script is inactivated. So to fix that, we can drag it under the script and set it up so that it will only be visible to us when the script's activated and when the address is allocated and registered. And I'll change the name because this isn't just a one-hit kill anymore. And if we still want a one-hit kill, we can do that. Just gonna make our multiplier a little bigger. Now, something to keep in mind is that basic math is at play here. So if you put in zero, you won't do any damage at all. <laughs> and negative numbers will actually heal the enemies. Oh yeah. So yeah, be aware of that. And alright, our damage multiplier is functional, but if you want to get fancy, you can right click the symbol and come up and choose set and change drop down selection options, and in this window, we can type values we want to predefine and assign them a description. Values go on the left of the colon and descriptions to the right. And when you're done assigning values, you can check these two boxes to have your list come up whenever you double click in the value column, but you're still free to type in whatever you want. You just won't see a description for it unless, of course, you go and assign it one. And with the quick color change, we've got a nice looking damage multiplier. But keep in mind that the IMO command that we use to make this doesn't work with floats or doubles. And float is another very common value type for health. So in the next video, we'll take a break from Neo and create a damage multiplier in a game where health is a float value. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching. See you next time.